Okay, today I want to talk about a topic that's going to be uh, particularly important if you are uh, going to be heading to court, uh, in particular if you're going to be testifying. Uh, actually, it could be used for any, um, any of your witnesses that are going to be testifying, but I'm going to be talking about it in particular to you, and then you can kind of relate how it applies to your other witnesses. Um, and what that is, uh, I, I touch on it briefly uh, in, the, uh, in the program, can't remember in, in which module or which, which training, uh, but it's, it's the concept of taking the sting out of anything negative uh, that the other party could bring up with regard to you, okay? I want to talk a little bit more about that in detail and how you can apply it in your case, uh, and then we'll go from there. So, when I talk about taking the sting out of something negative, that the other party might try to use against you. Uh, it's something that you, if you're representing yourself, you can obviously do pretty easily. If you're not representing yourself and if you have an attorney, then you wanna to talk to them about it and, and get their point of view on it. But here are my recommendations for when you're doing that. First off, what I'm referring to is if uh, you know for sure that there's something either that you did or something in your history or something that the other party is going to try to say about you uh, and you are going to be testifying in your case. When you testify in your case, one of the tactics that I used to use in criminal trials all the time, uh, in particular when I put on my uh, defendant or when I put on a witness that had like a checkered past or something like that, what I would do is I would, I would have them testify about something negative in order to take the sting out of it, okay? What I mean by that is if you are, if there is something that they're going to bring up and you are the first one to bring it up, you kind of disarm them uh, on cross-examination or on their own testimony. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? And there's a specific way that you have to do it, especially in custody cases. And I'm going to try to decipher that a little bit here for you. Um, but the way that I like to do it with regard to custody cases and divorces is that if there, you only bring it up, if there is something specific that you did in your past or that they're going to allege that you did in your past or something like that. You don't bring it up for, okay, Jason, I'll, I'll try to explain a little bit more. Um, you don't bring it up for something in general. Okay. Let me give you an example. Say that, uh, say that you're about ready to take, or say that you're on the stand and you know, for sure that when the uh, opposing attorney is going to be cross-examining you, you know that uh, one year prior to the date of the trial that you had a DUI, okay? And you know that the other party is going to expose that when you're on the stand, right? During your cross-examination. The way that you minimize the effectiveness of the, and this is just one example, but the way that you would minimize the effectiveness of them bringing that up would be for you to bring it up, okay? So when you're testifying, you know, uh, maybe your attorney would say something. Is there anything, uh, is there anything in your past that you think the court uh, should be aware of? Uh, yes, there is. Okay, what is it? Uh, well, about a year ago, I had a DUI conviction. Um, you know, I'm not very proud of it at all. Uh, it was certainly a mistake that I made. Um, okay, can you explain uh, that to the court? Uh, yes, I, you know, I was out, I made a mistake. Um, you know, I had too much to drink at dinner and I got in a car I shouldn't have, and I really regret doing it, but I did it. And, you know, I've been following through with all of the recommendations, uh, of the court. I got into drug and alcohol, uh, evaluation, you know, I completed, uh, rehabilitation, Wh whatever the relevant topics would be, you would bring that up. And then what that does is when you're on cross-examination, like instead of the court or instead of the other party being able to be like, 
you were convicted of a DUI last year, weren't you? Like, what are they going to say? Like, you already talked about it. You already explained it. Like, that would be, that's stupid. Like, the, the judge already knows. Does that make sense? And, and the reason why I say that you do it with specifics is because you don't want to get into a situation where you are making, you are pointing out arguments that they have when you bring the sting out of something. So let me give you an example. Like the DUI would be fine. Any criminal record would be fine. Um, any other specifics, maybe, uh, maybe, you know, the child had an illegal absence when they were, you know, on your watch or like something like that, something specific. But if you know, they're going to try to allege something more general, like, parental alienation and why i say more general is because there are, are like uh, a number of facts that would need to be proven for parental alienation you wouldn't be like oh well yes you know uh, they're going to try to prove alienation but i'm not alienating you know what i mean you wouldn't you wouldn't bring up the sting that way what you would do however if you know that an argument's coming your way what you would do is you would just testify to uh facts and evidence that uh, counteract that argument, if that makes sense. So if you know that they're going to be arguing parental alienation, then you would testify to situations wherein you encouraged a relationship. You know, maybe the child uh, was making daily phone calls because you encouraged that. Um, Maybe you've given up extra time uh, when you didn't have to uh, as for the court order. You know what I mean? You wouldn't bring up the actual alienation because it's like a more of a general topic. So that you don't bring up this thing that way. You would, you would instead talk about the favorable facts that proves that that argument's bullshit. Does that make sense to everybody? You, you, so if it's something specific, then you want to address it. You could address it by name, you know, address it by the specific. If it's something in general, then you want to testify to the facts and the evidence that proves that that general argument is total bullshit, right? Because then when the judge is listening to their testimony or listening to the cross-examine, they already heard that you encouraged phone calls. You let the other side have extra time. Um, you let the family for the other side see the child, you know, on a weekly basis, like whatever it is. Okay. It doesn't have to be alienation. It can be anything. Um, and another thing is if you are bringing up the sting in something, uh, I see attorneys make this mistake a lot. Timing is important. You don't want to end your testimony on the negative okay because if you remember in the program i talk about uh direct testimony and the sequence to it and what they remember or what they hear first they remember best and what they hear last they remember first so the last thing you want to do is either start your testimony off right, right from the get with something negative or finish your testimony with something negative right what I usually like to do is I usually would like to hit it like here. So like right towards the end, I would hit it here. And then I would package the rest of the testimony up with positivity. Um, you know, maybe uh, the things that the, the things that you like to do with the child on your free time, the fact that you're always doing homework, like whatever it would be the positivity. And then after there's like a string of positivity, then what you're what you're looking for all right and it's very important to do it that way because you do not want to end you don't want the judge the last thing the judge to hear was that you were convicted of a dui the year prior to your custody trial even if it's even if it's going to end up being irrelevant even if it's even if you already took this thing out of it whatever you don't want to have the you don't want to have the judge hear that last you just don't it's not it, it, it doesn't make for good persuasion and and it's not it's just not good for optics and things like that um, 
And I think I really covered everything uh, with regard to that. So I hope that makes sense for everybody. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important thing. I use it. I mean, when I, I was representing uh, defendants in court, like I represented some people that were accused of doing some very nasty shit. And I obviously wouldn't bring the sting up by them, like admitting to the crime that they were being charged with. But like if they had something in their past or if there's a specific piece of evidence that they, you couldn't get around, um, then I would have them talk about it candidly with the jury. You know, just because it shows credibility, it shows responsibility by owning up to it, and it effectively takes the sting out of the uh, other party, which in a criminal case would be the Commonwealth or the state or the United States or whatever. It takes the sting out of their argument moving forward, okay? So you could pull like a, uh, well, yeah, well, uh, they already said that, you know? Well, they already talked about it. That's no big deal. You wouldn't really actually say that, but that's the whole point to get get the judge or the jury thinking that way if that makes sense okay hope it makes sense to everybody it's a very important tactic in 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 hearings and in trials and in, in evidence and presenting evidence and i would i would definitely talk to you if there's something negative in your past or something specifically negative that they're going to be pointing to if you're representing yourself i would think about doing that and if you're not representing yourself I would strongly uh, recommend that you talk to your attorney about that and how you can go about maybe bringing that out to take the sting out of it, okay?